Hi, welcome to Mix and Jam, a channel about game development experimentation. Today's project is based on The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. In the game, there are plenty of arrow types and most of them share very unique particle effects. One of my favorite effects is from the fire arrow because it looks and feels very powerful. So for today's project, my goal is to try and build that effect using Unity. The fire arrow particle effect has four fundamental phases. The charging phase, which is composed by some stretch lines, a spiral fire dust, the shining center, and a charging circle. The aiming phase, which is composed by a quick flash, a shining center, and smaller stretch lines. The moving phase, which is composed basically by a fire trail. And the hit phase, which is composed by a fire explosion and some debris. For this project, I created a simple third-person bow and arrow prototype to use it as a base for the particle recreation. Starting with the charging phase, I created a new particle system for the stretch lines. First thing I did was to change its duration for about 1.30 and deactivate the loop property. Then, on the shape window, I changed the shape of the emission to be a circle. On the render window, I changed the render mode from billboard to stretch billboard. This way, I could change the speed and length scale to make the particles stretch. I reduced the scale of the emission shape on the y-axis to make it more similar to the original. Then I added the size over lifetime property to make it fade its size to zero when the particles are both born and dead. I also used the color over lifetime property to achieve the fade in and out effect. Next thing was to create a material that would have more of a fire look with a red and orange tint and apply it to the particle. Then I moved on to the spiral dust particle. Creating a new particle system, on the shape window I changed the shape to a circle and made its start size random between 0.05 and 0.1. Then I applied the same material from the last particle. I had to remember to deactivate the looping property and also change the emission from rate over time to a burst of 50 particles at the beginning of its lifetime. This way, it only spawns the particles in a single burst. I also applied the properties of size over lifetime and color over lifetime to achieve a fade effect on its size and color. To make the dust particle move to its center, I've created a new particle system force field. The force field works like a gravity center for the particles, so I've set its size to be about the size of the dust particles. To make the dust particles attracted by the force field, I activated the external forces property. As you can see, the dust particles keep orbiting around the force field, so I fixed that by creating a sphere collider as a child of the particle, activated the collision property on the particle and made it lose its lifetime whenever it collides. To achieve the spiral effect, I created a script to make the dust particle rotate over time. I started working on the shining center particle, which is only a single emission particle that expands its size over lifetime using the property of size over lifetime. Next thing was to work on the charging circle. For that effect, I created a ring graphic and apply it to a new material to use it on the particle later on. Then, when creating a new particle system, I did a single emission particle that has a property size over lifetime to make it shrink its size over lifetime and then apply the ring material to it. For the aiming phase, I started creating the quick flash effect. That effect was a simple emission after the other animations from the charging phase were done. This particle has a red tinted color to it and it also shows very quickly. Next, 
I did the shiny center particle. This one was basically a copy as the charging face one with a loop option on. And again for the stretch lines, they were basically a copy of the one on the charging face but smaller and with the loop option on. I started adding the effect to the prototype to see how everything was going. Then I started working on the moving face. All of the particles from this phase were going to be attached to the arrow prefab from the prototype. For the trail effect, I created a new particle system with a sphere shape and with a small radius, so that particles would instantiate only at the center. The main thing to do here was to change the simulation space from local to world. In this way, the particle that already was emitted doesn't follow the object and just leaves a trail. After that, I started to work on the hit phase. First thing was to work on the explosion itself. For this, I created a new particle system that did a single burst emission on a sphere shape. I used the limit velocity over lifetime property to make the particle spawn with a high speed and then slow down. Then, I started working on the flying debris. I created a new particle system and changed its shape to a cone facing upwards. Then, I changed its emission to be a burst of about 6 particles and added the gravity modifier property. I also added trails to the particle using the trail window and finally added the fire material to it. Now, it was time to polish. So the first thing I did was to import the post processing stack. With the post processing stack, I was able to choose from many image effects. First thing I did was to add a bit of bloom to make the particle shine more like fire. Then I downloaded this nature kit set from Scythian Cat from the asset store. I added the forest environment to my scene. Then I went back to the post processing stack and added a bit of depth of field to the camera. And then finally, I did some color correction. After a bit of small adjustments, this is how it turned out. I'm pretty satisfied with the result. There is also a lot of room for experimentation if you want to download the project and recreate the other arrows in the game. As always, the link for the project's repository is on the description below. If you enjoyed this video, remember to like, share and subscribe. I'll be bringing more content like this on the future. See you in the next one.